Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1197. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about OR criteria. So I want to count from this data set all the records that contain Sue or Bobby Socks. Now, the problem with OR criteria when the actual criteria are coming from two different columns is that you can double count. So if I were to just use count ifs and count all of the sues and then add to it all of the Bobby Socks, I would get a count of eight. But what I really want is since this is OR criteria, I'm asking the question for every record. Are you Sue or are you Bobby Socks? You can get two trues, zero trues, one true, or one true. So we have to deal in our formula with the fact that sometimes we're going to get a count of two. Now, this problem doesn't occur when all the conditions are from the same column. And actually, over on this complete sheet, I have examples for counting and adding for and or criteria where the events are mutually exclusive, and then our example where or criteria where events are not mutually exclusive. But all I want to talk about is this one situation where we have or criteria from two different columns. Now we have three potential formula solutions, D, count account ifs, and sum products. We'll start with perhaps the easiest one to create, but the D counter solution will have the most limitations. Now, D, that means database. If we come over here and say equals D count, there's a count, a counter, a D sum, a D standard deviation. We're going to use counter because we're counting text items. Now, first argument is database. You have to have a proper data set with field names at the top and records in rows. That's a limitation because sometimes you don't have field names at the top. In essence, for D functions to work, you have to have field names so they can communicate with the criteria area. Comma. Field, we can pick the first one or the second one to count upon. I'm going to type a 1. You can actually put a 1 or put the name of the field you want to count comma, and criteria argument. This is another potential drawback, because you have to have the exact field names in the criteria area, and you have to list your criteria below. Now, and criteria goes on the same line for database functions, or criteria goes on different lines. So this is how we have to set it up. Now, this is beautiful in this example, because this form is a lot easier than these other ones. But if you can't set it up this way, or you're copying your formula, then decounter is not really a good solution. The reason that copying is hard is because it's really hard to set anything up where you could copy this formula down and have field names and criteria. But watch this. Close parentheses and Enter. There it is. It does not double count. If we were counting all of them, remember, we'd get 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But D counter has no problem. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, another solution is count ifs. In count ifs, we're going to demonstrate that count ifs and some products can both be copied and have the criteria off to the side. Now, let's just look at the two count ifs and see that these will double count. So criteria range 1, I'm going to start with Sue. So I'm going to highlight the whole range, F4, comma. Now criteria 2, you can't see it. But I'm going to arrow over, arrow, arrow to get G9. That has Sue's name, and that's a relative cell reference. Close parentheses. Now that'll give me a count of 3. So I add to it my second count ifs, highlight the manager range. F4 to lock it, because I'm copying it, comma. And then I'm going to arrow over. And I can see that the dancing ants are kind of right there. That's the H9. That's the Bobby Socks. Now, this will just give me a double count, Eight. Control Enter. That's not what I want. But let's look over to this data set. We can subtract from the 
two count ifs that are adding, we can use a third count if to subtract the and criteria. Now, if I do and criteria, I'm asking the question, is Sue and Bobby Cox in the same record? And and criteria just gets a single count when it finds both. Now, look at this. If we subtract the and, that means it's going to get a total of 8 minus the two times it found both. And that'll work just fine, F2. Minus count ifs. And here's the criteria range 1, F4, comma, arrow, arrow to get that G9, that's Sue, comma. And we're using criteria range 2, which means now when you start using multiple ranges, you're doing AND criteria. So I'm going to highlight F4, comma, and then arrow, arrow to get Bobby Sox in H9 and close parentheses. So we're adding all of them, all of them, and subtracting the double counting. Six. Control Enter, and we get a 6. And this formula can easily be copied. Click down here in F2. Six. Now let's just go look how this formula calculates. I'm going to click in this cell and go up to Formulas, Evaluate Formula, or use the keyboard Alt-MV. And we can step through. I'm hitting Enter, Enter. And the first count ifs gives us 3. Enter, Enter, plus 5. Enter, double counting, minus the AND of 2. Boom, we get our correct solution. So advantage number one for count ifs is that you can copy it, right? Disadvantage is that that is huge compared to this. Now, let's look at another example, some products. And this will involve some array calculations. Equals some product. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build a series of or logical tests using adding in this array argument. Now, I'm going to have a few calculations, and I'm going to put two parentheses. And the first question I want to ask is, hey, is anything in here F4? equal to, and notice with array calculations, you do a direct comparison between a range and the criteria with an equal sign. And I'm going to say G12. So I'm asking the question, is anything in there equal to Sue? If I were to highlight bloop, this in F9, you could see I get trues and falses. There's exactly three trues, close parentheses. Now for OR criteria, when you're doing Boolean, you use a plus symbol. You add. So now I'm going to get my second column, F4 equals, and any of, are any of you equal to Bobby Sue, close parentheses. Now if I highlight this in F9, I get my trues and falses, and there's exactly five of them for Bobby Sox. Control Z. Now what does the plus do? Let's watch this. And I'm going to highlight just the inside part, not that orange parentheses. That plus is going to take any true plus true and convert it to a 2, any true plus false to a 1, any false plus true to a 1, and any false plus false to a 0. If I F9 to evaluate, I can see there's the 2. That's for that first record there. 0, 1, that's for this record here, and so on. Now if I were to rely on some product to add these, I would double count. So I need to do something with this resultant array of numbers. Control Z. So watch this. Inside that orange parentheses, I'm going to ask, is that array of zeros, ones, and two, are any of you greater than zero? Close parentheses. Now, if I come inside and highlight this, you might be tempted to put parentheses around this whole operation here to get that plus. But the order of operations in how Excel calculates a formula will always do math operations before comparative operators. So when I hit F9, notice that's a comparative operator. When you have a comparative operator in a formula, it spits out trues and falses, just like for our equal sign. So when I hit F9, there's our trues and falses. Now the thing about some product is some product cannot understand trues and falses, Control Z. So now we need to do another math operation to convert those to now ones and zeros. And I'm going to use double negative, because inside of some product, that's the most efficient math operation for 
converting trues and falses to ones and zeros. For larger formulas, that kind of uh, efficiency matters. Now close parentheses. And just to see that this is working, I'm going to click on the array F9. And there's our count. No double counting. By the way, many years ago at the Mr. Excel message board, I learned this little trick of greater than 0 for or Boolean adding from Barry Houdini. <laughs> Control Enter. And if I did all my cell references right when I copy this down, I can see everything's locked. Now let's compare and contrast this to count ifs. It looks like this is a lot shorter. However, it may be easier to create than this one. One disadvantage that we'll go look at in just a second is this is a lot of array operations. There's a direct array operation there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So there's five array operations in there. On larger formulas, that takes a long time to calculate. So some product shorter than the count ifs. You can copy it, but it may take longer to calculate. Count ifs, the long, it looks like it's the longest one to create, although the, the logic behind the sum product may be more complicated for some people. Looks like it's longer, but it also can be copied. This one is just flat out the easiest if we can set it up this way. But now let's go look at this sheet over here. I've timed all of these. Now uh, let's see. Control down arrow. So it looks like we have like 100,000 records here. And so I went ahead and did D counter, count ifs, and some product. I timed them three times. Calculate the average. The D counter is the biggest. Now in my book, Control Shift Enter, I did similar comparisons between these formulas on single or an and criteria. The count ifs was usually faster than D counter, but notice we have three count ifs here. So definitely D counter comes up on top. If we're comparing these two, because these are the most versatile, remember count ifs and some product don't need a proper data set. They don't need field names in the criteria area, and they're easy to copy. So these two, count ifs is the fastest, right? So about 30% faster. This stuff doesn't matter unless you've got large data sets. Hey, that was a lot of fun with OR criteria counting to avoid double counting. D counter, if you can set it up that way. Count ifs or some product. All right, we'll see you next video.